What's going on YouTube, it's Mike here. Today guys, in this video, I'm gonna be talking about iOS 9. So as you guys know, we are coming up on WWDC 2015. It's just a couple weeks away here. It starts on June 8th, and Apple, of course, is going to be announcing a couple things on the first day of the developer conference. Now, in another video, I'm gonna get into all these things, but what I really wanted to talk about today is the major thing, and that is, of course, iOS 9. And as you know, every summer, Apple loves to offer the latest betas of their latest iOS before they actually make it public in the fall when the newest iPhone comes out, usually, and people go crazy over them. I mean, they want them right off the bat. They don't wanna to have to wait until the fall when everybody can have access to them. Now, before we get into that, I wanna talk a little bit about a site called UDIDregistrations.com. So basically, the site lets you join their development team so you're authorized to test out the latest iOS 9 beta firmwares. Their memberships start at only $4.99, which obviously is cheaper than registering as a developer yourself. And also the packages are at their lowest price points right now. So this is their cheapest, the $4.99 one. Um, but if you go all the way up to something like the gold package, which is their best on the page here, you literally get everything. You get UDID registration, instant processing, certificate and provisioning, premium membership, device replacement, and it's just most capable. So I just recommend the gold always to everybody. Um, that always seems to work the best and has the best uh, part of it, of course. And there's also a 20% off coupon that you could use right now on gold or silver packages in case they're a little too pricey for you. Simply use 20 off uh, with no quotes in your cart. Supplies are limited, so definitely go make sure you do that and you can get um, for the best deal these packages. So go take advantage of that for sure. And you could process with any major uh, debit or credit cards as well as Bitcoin, PayPal. Now when you register your device, it's going to last for an entire year. That's 365 days. So that means that you're going to be able to access all of the iOS 9 betas when they actually come out. And this is definitely a site you want to trust. I've been with UDID registrations for years. They're really great. Some sites don't explicitly state that. And right after the beta cycle is over with Apple for a major iOS release, they'll just cut you off their plan. With UDIDregistrations.com, um, that is a completely different scenario. They'll have you registered for the entire course of the year. You definitely want to have the developer betas first because, you know, Apple releases developer betas much more often than public betas. They're a lot more stable. You're you're getting the most recent version uh, much quicker than you would with the public beta, and you're also getting the most recent features. Public beta is nice to have and all for those that don't want to spend, but those that do and want to have access to all those features as soon as possible, and the most stable beta updates should definitely get their device registered. Now, a common issue is a lot of people say that their devices haven't been registered or they're not able to access the betas. This, of course, is not the case, but it could take some time. Things could be going a little bit slowly. Rest assured, your device is um, registered and ready to go. I'm going to leave their link down in the description so you can go check them out. They have my seal of approval and guarantee that your device will be up and running in no time registered so you can access Apple's latest iOS 9 betas when they announce them at WWDC in a couple weeks. So get it done, go check them out. Links in the description. Anyways, let's get back to iOS 9, what we were talking about, of course. Now this update is probably not going to be what you think right off the bat, where there's going to be a slew of new features. Instead, it's going to be major improvements under the hood and an overhaul basically, um, you know, with speed and stability and stuff like that. Something that we really have taken for granted and will most likely appreciate a lot um, when Apple releases the, some of the first betas of iOS 9. So right off the bat, we could see major bug fixes, major animation lag fixes and tweaks, and just so overall the UI and interface and everything associated with that just feels a little bit snappier and faster. With that, hopefully we can see updates actually taking up or at least asking for less amounts of space when it comes to updating. As you know, uh, iOS 8 was a very slow adoption, and I think, as well as many others, that was because it was just gigantic in size. It was like over two gigs and nobody wanted to download it, especially those stuck with 16 gig phones, and I think that's why uh, adoption was so slow. So Apple needs to figure out how to crunch those numbers down and make the update significantly smaller in size. And hopefully that's something we can see with iOS 9 or hopefully Apple just stops selling 16 gig iPhones because that's just ridiculous at this point. I think we're out of that phase. I have a 64 gig 6 plus and I love it. I think we should just go with bigger phones. I think Apple needs to drop 16 gig. Another big thing about iOS 9 is Apple Music or iMusic, whatever you want to call it. Their new streaming service um, where they're going to take Beats Music, which they bought last year along with the entire company with the headphones and all and hopefully they're going to actually release their own
own streaming software. Now, I would love to see this. We've already seen Apple completely redo the music app with iOS 8.4, and Apple wouldn't do this if they didn't have severe and heavy interest in doing something with the music app because no one really buys music anymore. I pay uh, $10 a month for Spotify to stream all my music, and I absolutely love it. It's something that I'm looking forward to a lot, and I love Apple's new concept uh, with the new music app in iOS 8.4, and I can't wait to see it dragged over to iOS 9 with their new streaming service. And we can expect to see that uh, announced at WWDC alongside iOS 9, but of course integrated into iOS 9. There's also been some rumors about maps improvements, which includes transit directions for buses and trains and stuff. So as you know, since iOS 6, Apple's had a lot of issues with maps, and but since iOS 7, they've pretty much been able to turn it around, and every major iOS release, they enhance maps a lot with flyover tours and just better directions and stuff like that. So and maps is definitely an area that can continue to be improved, and I think we could see some great stuff from it in iOS 9. And aside from transit directions, there's also been some rumors about indoor maps. As you know, Apple's got a bunch of self-driving cars going around right now. We don't really know if they're either mapping the world or if that's Apple's potential car coming in 2020 but we'll save that for another video as well. Now, for quite a couple of years, there's been rumored split screen multitasking for the iPad. The only way I can see this possible with iOS 9 is if we see that 12.9 inch iPad Pro that's been rumored forever now. Now we're finally starting to see a lot of mock-ups of that, especially in the uh, case industry. And so I wouldn't be surprised if that's something we do get. I think it would only be limited to the iPad Pro though, because it's such a big screen. Even though the 9.7 inch screen on the regular iPad is big, I just, I would only see it on the largest tablet possible. There's also been rumors of Siri enhancements, and I think Siri can do much more than it does now, especially on the Apple Watch. I hate Siri on this thing. It doesn't do a lot at all. It mostly just tells me to go on my iPhone and use handoff and to answer all of its questions. It does very, very basic things on the watch. And even though it does do a lot of complex stuff um, since it was introduced with, I think iOS 5 it was, um, you know, there's definitely room for improvement. There's been rumors that the user interface of Siri will be updated in iOS 9 on iOS to look very similar uh, of what is currently on the Apple Watch, which is a little bit different. Like I said in the beginning, we're just gonna see a lot of stuff fine tuned. A lot of the new features that we saw in iOS 7 and iOS 8 that were then at the time brand new and so cool are going to be made even cooler because they're going to become so much snappier, easier to use, and faster. So just overall, you feel like you have a really fast phone. You know, sometimes things freeze up or go slow or they just overall crash and don't work for you the way you would hope or would have wanted to. And so I think Apple, it's time for them to go into all that stuff and really enhance it and fix it. We can expect the first beta of iOS 9.0 beta 1, whatever you want to call it, on June 8th, 2015, the first day of WWDC. You'll be able to download it, of course, if you're a registered developer or if you register your UDID with UDIDregistrations.com. And then, you know, throughout the summer, Apple's going to release uh, beta updates if you're already on iOS 9.0, you can do them over the air. If you're not, you just have to restore, of course, to the most recent one. And then we can see the final uh, release of iOS 9 on September 16th. And I know that's weird that I'm predicting that date. September 16th, 2015. If you look at the calendars from the previous years, for example, last year uh, was on September 17th that we got iOS 8 and then the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus came out two days later on September 19th. Obviously, every year we go back a day. Uh, so it makes sense for that to be the 16th. And I hope I'm right on that one. I'm predicting that very early, several months in advance, but let's see if that happens. But there you guys go. That is my video on iOS 9. Basically, I wanted to bring everything together. I really haven't talked about it a lot yet, and so I wanted to kind of start that with this video. Of course, you know basically what you can expect, uh, hopefully what we'll see when Apple first announces it at WWDC, and of course, how you can register it and get it with UDIDregistrations.com. Again, great site. Recommend going with them to get your UDID registered. That's it, guys. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please drop some comments below on your thoughts. Of course, rate, give this video a thumbs up, and click the subscribe button below. And I'll see you guys in the next video.